happy Women's History Month. And speaking of women, we are going to be discussing two badasses who basically ran Disney back in the early 2000s. Now, was it Miss Hannah Montana? Hannah Montana. Hannah Montana. Woo woo. Rest in peace, take off. Or was it That's So Raven? It's the future I can say. <laughs> Guys, we will be telling you our thoughts. We already know what the real answer is, but we will be digging deeper into this combo at, right after this. Cue the intro. And Miss Danny the doll. And I am Sophie Joe, and, and you, you are, are watching, watching Sister Sally. Oh, those are other Disney legends. Well, they weren't on Disney. Anyways, guys, yeah. <laughs> we are here today, of course, with another episode of Sister Sound Off. We're happy to have you here. But let's jump into our first segment, which is A, a sip, sip with sis. sis. I am sipping. I was gonna say, don't even pick that gum up. Listen. We, I'm having a sip in spirit, okay? Yeah. She, I'm sipping on some tea. She's sipping on air. Okay. That's hey, fine. <laughs> next next episode, we'll be sipping on some wine. Mm. So, you know. But, yeah. So, since back, um, what we were talking about, you know, with it being Women's History Month, we thought it'd be a great idea to get into the women who ran our favorite um franchise which is disney we yes. grew up as disney kids early and, 2000s mm-hmm, and a little bit earlier for me because you know, i'm like four years older but you know um yeah so we we wanted to discuss who is the queen of disney because mm-hmm. recently it's been in the headlines or we saw online that um disney this is according to uh masslive.com it says miley cyrus to become youngest entertainer named disney legend yeah okay now, keep in mind, of course, there is other people who we also, and I'm sure you do too, uh, think is qualified to be Disney legends. I mean, people who paved the way for her and even people after her. I mean, I mean Hobbs and Dale who started on there. Demi you Lovato thought, started. Yeah, Selena Gomez. And Ariana then, Grande! Oh, wait, that's Nickelodeon, my that's, bad. Mm, yeah, we won't get but still, no y'all. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> oh, and then um, Hillary Dove, which is... Uh, yeah. I mean, these are people we grew up with, but don't get me wrong, Miley Cyrus, I think it is something that's well-deserved for her. However, we cannot include none of these folks exactly <laughs> without Miss Raven Simone. Please, put some big respect on Raven argue. back the name. I can see into the future. Okay, argue with your mom, because that girl was the Beyonce of Disney at one point. <laughs> yeah, like... I know, you know, of course, it's well deserved for Miley to get this um, honorary title, but Raven honestly should have been the first to get it because we can't pretend like Raven. Let's just break it down. Yeah, all yeah, the accomplishments of we got the receipts. Raven, y'all. okay, Simone. just get some y'all forgot to. Um, hold yeah. on, let us put up our notes. Okay, <laughs> so this is just the the specs. Okay, let's get this out the way. The boring stuff. Hannah Montana was on air for four seasons from 2006 to 2011. That's so Raven was also on air for four seasons from 2003 to 2007. So as we can see, Hannah Montana kind of started at the tail end of That's So Raven. Um, didn't they have a crossover episode? They did. It was That So Sweet Life of Hannah Montana. Which was so cool. Yeah, because That's So Raven, Hannah Montana, and The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody were the three big they were those were the three shows that was basically running disney at the time so they decided to bring all of them together and for those of you who grew up i'm sure you remember that episode and yeah it was great it was great and it was like oh my god no raven what, that, what, what? it was like a lot going on but we really yeah. loved it so raven simone which by the way is still on disney channel with it's called raven's house so let's talk about that first off yeah um, the rundown with Raven basically okay. Oh, do we, do we want to break? We want to talk about the awards first or the entertainment? No, 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 no. 
Oh, I got the awards. Okay. Of course, we know the history with them and their Disney careers. We right now we basically just telling y'all why Raven is the queen of Disney, <laughs> honestly, yeah. and not Miley. Like, no Ra- yeah, like Miley's. I mean, Miley. I mean, she. The world was was crazy about her, just like we were with High School Musical yes. or the Cheetah Girls. Um, I feel like Raven is like the the queen and. Hannah was like the princess. Like she was like right, yeah, right, right, right up. Yep. Princess yep, yep. of Disney, and then you have the queen of Disney. Okay. Um. So and, with, I'm sorry. sorry. And, and I don't want to bring because y'all know me. I bring up color in a second. I don't want to bring demographics into it. But I think Raven and um Miley or Hannah Montana both had like an equal audience as far as because a lot of times we'll see a black show and say, oh, majority of her audience is black. No, her show everybody watched. And same with Hannah Montana. They had all demographics watches so yeah just yeah right now. now what were you saying Daddy? yeah uh i was gonna you know pull out the awards first of all the, <laughs> these two women are very successful we're so passionate about this. i know we're this i mean come on like we we know that. okay so raven's uh accolades uh she's won five naacp awards who Ooh. knew throughout her career yes two kid choice awards which is i mean come on the, she also won, has won the Youngest Artist Award. She's won, she's been on VH1 100 Greatest Child Stars of All Time. First off, that's that's this a is, flex in this its This is own. news to me. Yeah, oh, she's won a Radio Disney um, Award, uh, an Impact Icon Award. Uh, of course, awards for TV shows and things like that. And the Impact Icon Award was for her playing her role on The Cosby Show. See, that's what see, and, and that's what I'm saying, right? Because <laughs> yeah. once again, no shade to Miley. She's a great actress and singer, you know. But we're talking about really boots on the ground and been in that mud. Raven has been acting since freaking four years old. Yeah, she's she's grew up with more than um two like two generations of, of different kids, you exactly. know. From the eighties to not eighties, but the nineties and up, you yep. know. And I mean, I just think that's incredible, especially for her age. Now, of course, Miley. Now, to me, Miley, she's more on the more successful, of course, with her music on the music side than Raven. Bingo. But then Raven Bingo. has her acting exactly uh, bag, so she's more successful there. Right, but it's not to say because, and if y'all remember when Raven got a little bit older, and she was on. This is after that, so Raven, I think, and she was a guest on 106 and Park on BET, and then. I think Bow Wow or the host asked her something about her music career and then Raven Low Cute got a little offended. She was like, aren't I always in the studio making music that nobody buys? Like, <laughs> so it's yeah. not like Raven wasn't making music. She was, but for some reason her audience, you know, just gravitated more towards her acting because it was that good. Now, Danielle can attest to this because if y'all didn't know, once again, we are real sisters. Um, when I was, what? a kid y'all i literally thought i was raven baxter okay she that's the reason why i'm very animated to this day so much so to that my mom got me tickets to go see Raven. this is what see she did music i went and saw raven baxter in a raven simone in concert because she had music out yeah we got tickets we went to it was great about to georgia i was crying <laughs> she was freaking out she, you have she had the Raven doll still has Raven it. Raven doll is still in my uh, archive. We have the That's So Raven game, the game board, the That's So Raven calendar. I still have all the stuff. The That's So Raven perfume, which smelled amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like she was that girl. And then, of course, her history with Disney. Now, before we get into that, let's dive into a little bit of Molly accolades because she got some too, which some are very earned. Uh, of course, she's got. Miley has a bunch of Billboard and Music Awards, which makes sense um, considering, you know, she had a thriving career, uh, music career exactly. after Hannah Montana. So she's got M- uh, several MTV uh, Awards. I thought you was going to say NAACP no. Awards. <laughs> Man, hold on. <laughs> you look too inclusive. Uh, 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 MTV Video Award for, I think it was for Wrecking Ball. And then she had a um, World Music Award for her song the climb oh my which gosh y'all know how big that was from wasn't that your senior song or something at high school oh yeah the climb yeah which i'm sure was a lot of people like, graduate songs it's a little corny but if you listen to the words it's really good it's, yeah like, it is i can almost see it <laughs> because the movie was a big box office yeah, hit you guys remember the hannah montana movie when she finally took off that wig after 300 seasons 
Hannah Montana. Yes, and revealed herself. <laughs> yeah. What about the other movie she did when she wasn't Hannah? She was acting with that boy who I became was, her real boyfriend. I was going to get into okay. that. That's mm-hmm. a good movie. That one, that one was a good one, too. Um, she's got a Brit Award, uh, uh, Radio Disney Awards, um, of course, more Billboard Awards. She and just, just won her first Grammy. Was, yep. That was the last one I was going to say. She's gotten two Grammys. And this year, mm-hmm, one for her, I think it was app song of the year was those flowers i can buy myself flowers that was a good that's album a good so yeah she won she's got two grimms on her belt huh? so that's right with that comparison with the with the awards and everything so and they're both fire actors and singers honestly mm-hmm. you know just great creative people it's just once again when we talking about the queen of disney who ran in her the 2000s yeah we have to give it to her and yeah because moving on to the shows and movies that they've done of course they, they have the little awards and everything which is great but when we talking about them and their impact that they made with disney, disney. uh let's get into that so with molly all the stats oh yeah i'm coming with everything so that y'all can have a clear understanding on why <laughs> she's a queen in case some of y'all forgot okay <laughs> um so with uh molly um her list is a little short, but hey, it, it's still there. Of course, her hit show had Montana, which ran for how many seasons? Four seasons. Both ran for four seasons. Four seasons, and then that fought that. Um, followed up with the Hannah Montana the movie, which was huge. It was was that in theaters? Mm-mm. It wasn't. It wasn't. But it was huge. Like High School Musical, huge. Yeah. Um, and then the movie she played in called The Last Song. I actually seen that in theaters i'm not sure that's a good movie yeah she played in the last song which has nothing to do with disney but you know um, um a movie later on called lol and another one called so undercover and recently kind of recently she was a coach for two seasons on the hit singing show the voice mm. which was good and too. let's not forget her dad billy ray cyrus was a also a huge uh part of her becoming successful i think a lot of times yeah. i mean we don't like to admit it but sometimes it helps when your parents are already famous yeah now i want to get into the acting bag mm-hmm. that raven was in not only remembering and yeah, you know learning her know. lines mm-hmm. but the different characters, characters that raven played she, she was played, out here given martin okay right, the country <laughs> cousin episode she played the teacher one time she played she did stunts i mean she was just really showing how to you know and she this is mind you this is why this girl is young she could be out here twirling her thumbs or playing volleyball or skating it no she's at home <laughs> rehearsing them lines and getting in front of that camera and doing what needs to be done yes and it was for years i mean she impacts it and gave the world something incredible to look at and and that's why i say in honor of women history month she really made history she was the youngest and not was she the youngest she might not be the youngest i'm not sure but she was the first black lead, female lead let's on a talk tv about it. show let's talk okay? about it that's a flex in its let's own talk about okay? it. and that's another thing not <laughs> to bring color into it again but raven gave a lot of uh, all girls but in particular young black, black girls. girls you know oh my god she is somebody she's doing that maybe i can do it she inspired me yeah you know showing people you can tap into your talents that you've been given and really expand and inspire people and just for sure yeah now of course i mentioned earlier you know molly and her little run with disney you know hannah montana show the movie and um she also um was a special guest on a few other little disney shows like the sweet life of Zach and cody and then she was also at the very end of the movie high school musical 2 mm. i don't know if y'all remember that she was like dancing by the pool yeah sure. but now with raven this girl's been with disney for a while Fair. okay still with him. um first off the cheetah girl saga boom we cannot for oh i, I forgot y'all that's not even on my notes yeah and i'm a huge i'm a cheetah girl i forgot i'm a huge cheetah fan yeah so the cheetah girls that's which epic. was huge um kim possible you guys remember the show she played kim's best friend monique god dang mm-hmm. it and then it was she was in the princess diaries yep one of my faves cory in the house which was you know a um, long but it was a yeah which was a spinoff spinoff from that's a raven xenon girl of the 21st century oh xenon z4 totally Mm -hmm. forgot yeah she was she played that girl okay great i mean and then of course raven's home and of course what made her a legend all of it 
that so raven okay yes. so we're talking from night early 1990s all the way to until now. to now currently like so miley kind of ended or you know yeah ended her disney run which was really great like i said four seasons and she kind of tapped more into her, music her mature music side which is cool because like we said she has been really uh well accomplished in that department as well okay? yeah and she definitely uh went um went in with a bang you guys remember that infamous performance with oh her oh my gosh i forgot she tried to go black her and robin Thicke. juicy j y'all remember that <laughs> that little twerk she <laughs> yeah she's definitely been through some things but hey guys yeah. we we love both of the ladies like they all said yeah. in women in honor of women's history month they both impacted the world and little girls and boys you know from disney so we definitely want to hear y'all's thoughts so let us know do you think raven or Miley Cyrus with the Queen of Disney. It, yes. So let us know in the comments. Uh, we're going to put a poll up on Instagram. Make sure y'all let us know your thoughts, okay? Okay. And we'll continue this conversation in the comments. Okay. So please let us know. All right, guys. Now it's time to get into a segment we like to call Nailed, Nailed it, it or Failed it. it. This is when me and Danny the Doll just rate uh, whatever's happening right now popular in fashion. For this episode, episode nine, make sure you guys are subscribed um, and listening to all your favorite platforms. We are going to be rating the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion looks. The reunion hasn't come out yet, but their outfits have, mm-hmm. and it's been all oh, the rave. So we're going to break it down. I did want to mention that it's very interesting to see how Danny the Doll rates these looks because I am a fan. I'm a Bravo girl, okay? I watch this show religiously. <laughs> Danny on the other hand does not so it's going to be interesting to hear an unbiased opinion because you know sometimes somebody outfit might be given but just because i don't like her i might say girl uh uh-uh. you know yeah so i'm curious to hear her thoughts <laughs> so let's get into it and here are our different opinions and of course for those of you who are watching we will have the pictures up so you yourself can decide whether you think they nailed it or failed it yes and for our people who are listening uh, we will describe the best we can. Right. <laughs> and thank uh, you for listening. <laughs> yes. If not, hit that link and tune in to YouTube and you can watch. Anyways, guys, so first up from the RHOP reunion, we have Mia. Um, I'll, uh, you go first. Yeah, you go first. I love it. Okay. I do. Um, I'm going to give it a nailed it. And now, I wish the shoes, I, I don't like the thin spaghetti strap. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking more of a blocky shoe mm-hmm. or a blocky heel for this because of the texture and the full fullness of the bottom of the dress. So it needs a blocky shoe. You can't really see, um, you know, the shoe very well. But the flowy, the flowiness of the dress, the detailing with the little bow. She's got the dress for it. Hey, listen, I'm not here to uh, judge my A cups people because we're beautiful too. <laughs> But sometimes you need a little help up here to mm-hmm. form out a dress. And she's got it. And it looks great on her. I like the slick back ponytail. And I love um, the glowiness of the skin, which is great. If you're going to do a dark color like this, make sure the skin is popping. So, overall, she looks great. So, I'll definitely give her a nail dip. Just my opinion. Okay. Well, Mia. Um, I'm going to give Mia a nail dip as well. I just want to see... I can't wait to see her stay. I haven't seen her stand up in it. So I'm curious to see oh, how it yeah. looks standing. You, you know, know, I didn't think about that sometimes when. Yeah. Cause I don't, I can't tell if it's a, a cut, if it's a slit. Yeah. But right now sitting down, it's a nailed it. The, the dress material looks like a ponytail. Like the material looks like <laughs> yeah. hair. Yeah. But uh, Mia, I liked it. You know, yeah. you might need to see it. You know what? I'm not going to say that. Yeah. Nailed it. Next, we have Miss Candace, and so sad to see that Candace will not be Be rejoining Mm -hmm. the cast next season, but she will be coming back, just not next season. Um, For me, I'm going to go nailed it. I don't like the mic in front because I can't really see exactly what it's given, but it's a nailed it for me. Sometimes Candace's hair isn't always the best, but she got it right in this reunion look. It's given seductive. It's given sultry. It's given I'm a late night jazz singer in a club diner type of vibe. It's a nailed it for me. Danny, what you thinking? I'm gonna go with Ooh, I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go with she didn't completely fill it mm-hmm. but I'm gonna go with the hangnail and what we like to call it on the show is a hangnail you know it's basically when you 
they didn't completely spell it but they didn't exactly nail it you're kind of in between so we call it a hangnail um right and i'm only saying that with her because i do like the hair the makeup looks great i feel like the pose is a little forced she could have simply held the mic with one hand that way you can see the rest of the outfit instead of holding it with two because it's like so um sophie said you know it's covering the front the hangnail for me not only is because of the pose but i don't like the sleeves on the dress what i, I don't like the touch i don't like the sleeves and i don't not the shoes um i would have did a different shoe yeah do a different shoe and of course you don't have to always have your toes polished but with this dress i feel like she should have i don't know i think the lace would have been nice on the sleeve i think there it looks too thin or something mm. so it's not blending really with that. i'm not sure okay. but yeah i hate no for me but the face and the makeup, the makeup looks great it. yeah her skin looks flawless too so <laughs> you go ahead okay next i'm naming the people because they all don't know these folks this is ashley darby miss forehead herself what are you what are you giving um again i don't know what's going on with everybody in the shoe department <laughs> but yeah it's everybody <laughs> It looks like she threw on the, You know, like you even run out to the car and get the groceries out the car. Like, let me just throw these on real quick. <laughs> like, so we should throw on slippers today. <laughs> it's fine. We in the house, y'all. Um, yeah, like, everybody's missing the shoes. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. But as far as the dress and the hair, I'm going to give it a nail day. I actually like it. It looks great. Something is going on. Something is off with her legs thing. It was the me. Everybody is okay. critiquing her pose. It's like, look at the lady behind her, that picture. It's like she's mimicking her pose, like Superwoman or something. I don't know. The, yeah, something's going on with the legs. I'm not feeling the, the, the stand. But like I said, the dress is beautiful. The hair is giving very uh, beauty queen. And uh, she's got a great smile. So, she yeah. used to be a pageant girl. Okay, so... so what, yeah, nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. For okay, you, you know what? For Ashley, I would have did a different hairstyle. I would have did a different shoe, and I would have taken that <laughs> back cape off. So it's a hay nail for me because it's not terrible. Ashley, it's not terrible. So it's a hay nail for me. If I had to rate it one to ten, I'd give it a six. Okay. Next up, guys, we have the grand dame, my fave, Miss Karen Huger. I'm gonna just go first. I'm gonna say. Just because I'm gonna say nailed it. The shoe I love. Um, I like this cut on Karen. It's different. She never gives us this cut. Um, it's a nailed. I don't necessarily like the dress, but I like that she took a fashion risk. She's trying to get fashion. I'm gonna go nailed it. And let's just be honest. Karen is literally double these girls' age. Some of them. She's killing the girls. Okay, not just this look alone, but in general, it's a nailed it from Miss Karen. Um, I'm gonna go with a felt it. Just my personal opinion. Her makeup is beautiful, and I like the hair on her. Mm -hmm. Um, but the dress is giving tree stump. Um, the shoes. Yeah, everybody's missing with the shoes. I'm. I was trying to fight for it, but I can't fight for you, girl. Um, but everything else <laughs> is is okay. You know, this like I said, the hair, the makeup, beautiful. I like the earrings, and I like her pose. Out of all the girls, hers actually is is the nicest so far. She's so al she's always having to teach the girls something. Yeah, so I'm here for that. But yeah, it's, it's gonna be a daughter for the dress. Yeah. Okay. Next up, we have Miss or sorry, my bad, Doctor Wendy. Sure. Um, I guess I'll start it off. You know what? It's a hangnail, and the only reason it's a hangnail is because I hate the necklace and I hate the hair. But the dress itself and the gloves, it's a uh, nailed it once again. I just hate the hair and the necklace, but Dr. Wendy, uh, hangnail. I have to go with you, sis, on exactly what you said. It's a uh, hangnail for me because the dress is giving old Hollywood yes. beauty, very classy, dignified, but then the necklace is giving some type of gladiator, <laughs> and then the hair is giving, like, um, Michael, well, I'm like, I can't even say Michael, um, uh, I don't even know who, but it's, um, right. Yeah, it, it's given. I didn't add enough tracks or something, but yeah. Yeah, I don't like it. Mm -mm, you girl, said, so we both agree, Dr. Wendy, hangnail girl. Yeah. Okay, next up on the docket, we have uh, Miss Giselle. I'm going to just let Danielle start it off. Um, 
once again, Danny the Doll is not a uh, consistent fan or viewer of RHOP, so her thoughts and her views are unwavered and unbiased <laughs> versus me. Now, that while that may be true, I do remember her legendary <laughs> um, read that she got from... I don't know her oh, name. Oh, wow. Y'all remember that? Because she had her. I mean, that big ass binder she bought. See, this is so funny. Yeah. For somebody who doesn't really watch <laughs> the show, but she know that part. I remember that. This going when Monique her read her for filth. Yeah. Um, anyways, but on this picture, well, with this look, I want to go with a felded. And, you know, and yeah, because the dress. And some I know sometimes simplicity is good, but for here it's this simplicity is not working. Um, it's given Ross. Mm. It's it's given Ross uh, formal season. Um, with a dress that was like marked down for like thirty percent off. The shoes are cute. I think those are Versace. Yeah, the shoes are cute, but not with the dress. I don't like that one strap because it's giving a bra strap. It's not giving like a. Yeah, the necklace is fine. Um, and the hair, she's always doing blonde, right? She's always doing blonde. Yeah, I, I like the sleep back. So, yeah, girl, it's a fail. And it's got nothing to do with you being red for filth. It's just my opinion. Okay, for Giselle's reunion, it's very interesting that Danny the Doll said that uh, sometimes simplicity is best. The whole internet, including myself, are saying that this is <laughs> Giselle's best look only because to know Giselle is to know she has absolutely no sense of style or oh, fashion damn. she's a horrible dresser everybody knows this even the way she decorated her home it's terrible she will admit it probably so for this reunion look I think because she was tired of being dragged for her fashion they tried to go super simple because when you go simple she has on a black dress like you can't really mess that up so I'm gonna go nailed it this is a nail for Giselle she gotta do her research like this is amazing for her so it's a nailed it you know um beautiful lady i sometimes i think her lashes be too heavy but whatever the hair nice makeup nice dress simple and nice okay. guys i think we have one more person left okay. Ooh, cha. okay next up for nailed it or failed it we have miss neck up <laughs> see that that's why we always be throwing the shade Sorry, because they really they can come in here and read me for field, but hey, I'm on my show. So we have Miss Necka. I'm gonna go field it. Not only do I not like her personality, I hate her name. Her name matches her neck. Why is her neck always stuck out? Her name is Necka. So, anyways, the hair. I mean, it's just the failed it. Um, I don't even have much commentary. That little peep toe sticking out, the dress. Bye. It's a fail. What's your thoughts? <laughs> She was strong on that. Um, for me, for Miss uh, <laughs> Necka of the Woods, um, I don't know what type of thing she tried to do with this uh, material on her. Is that her left hand? The lace. The lace underneath. The... She was like, "I'm gonna give the girl sequence. I'm gonna give the girls lace. I'm gonna yeah. give the girls cleavage. I'm gonna do a peak tuck like <laughs> the 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 Madonna um uh, lace. Uh, gl- uh, you, you, if you guys." know about Madonna from the early 80s you know she had those lace gloves that she wore during her like a virgin days and that's what it's given and then I don't know why she put it underneath this dress or how she even got it under there but anyways um her cleavage looks nice <laughs> not sure what was who decided with that detail um the shoe I can't say anything because I can't see it it's uh, a little corner sticking out um skin looks decent she's got a winning smile and the hair is cute even though it's giving 2005 prom the um, pose is given it's picture day <laughs> yeah the yeah the, the hair is given i'm going my my first prom from like 2003 you know uh yeah um girl i'm sorry i'm have to give you a felt it's got nothing to do with her but it's, so we both agree yeah Fell for miss mecca too much material and too much going on okay <laughs> our last um contestant for the RHOP noted or failed it segment is Miss Robin Dixon. I'm going to let Danny the Doll start this off. Robin. Rocking in tree top. Um, I like her. I like the hair. I like the blunt bob. Not everybody can do that, but it looks nice on her to me and I like the color. Um, the dress. That's, that's not a dress. That's a, okay. Um, 
that's a fail because I'm no mm -mm. and not because it's not addressed I, I, I can see you know what she's trying to give with it but with this type of look it, it not everybody can pull it off and she didn't she didn't pull it off with this uh sorry um the skin was great like I said the hair so but as far as the dress mm -mm. no so failed it yeah you, you failed that girl so not only did Robin fail this for her lackluster personality and her lackluster life that she does not bring to RHOP no wonder why she's been demoted the outfit is just I mean we got sharps over here we got sequins over here we got pants leotards dress in the back cape I just it's a fail I'm not even gonna go too far in but it's a fail also besides the hair and the makeup I mean the hair and the outfit to me tell me what you think I think the makeup is very harsh see I wasn't even I guess I wasn't really paying attention too much to the makeup but is it just me I feel like a lot of times Robin's makeup is very intense and harsh the dark mm. smoky eye the heavy bronzer it's too much for her look but yeah. anyways guys that's a fail for me but <laughs> so that concludes nailed it or failed, failed it. it um arch op edition let us know your thoughts on these ladies looks yes okay and tune in uh next week for some more looks and uh yeah so that wraps it up what do we have that we signing on next oh we right on here speaking of ladies <laughs> let's go ahead and get into a little bit of housewife hot, hot minute. minute guys this is where danny the dog gives me 60 seconds on the clock to recap the latest episode of whatever housewife show that i'm watching right mm -hmm. now as you know we are recapping the season finale of real housewives of potomac and i think because it is the season finale i should be awarded two minutes okay you know what and she's right so yes. we're gonna <clears throat> boost this timer up a bit <laughs> Two minutes are on the clock, guys. Let's get a rundown of the season finale. Sis, go off. Alrighty, so um, Candace, Deborah, and Kiana had a fight, as we know, concluding. I know they fighting at this big age at the G and A Giselle and Ashley's athleisure line. I don't even know what to say. First off, I think they're too old to be fighting. I don't know why Kiana felt the need to fight Candace's battle, but Deborah was definitely in the wrong. Sorry, Miss Sesame Street. I don't condone bullying, but she's just not it. And she does look like the man from Sesame Street. So she came there rah rah, and rah rah is what she got. Uh, I don't think we'll see her again on the screen, as we know that Ashley said that she is taking a step back from the friendship with Deborah because, you know, of her actions. Um, also, Kiana's head was bleeding because she was hit in the head with a glass. Now, if she oh wanted my. to take a legal step and sue her, that'll be a whole other thing. And Deborah, you brought it on yourself. Um, at the magazine reveal party, I think all the ladies did a really great job, you know, impersonating or embodying all the different celebrities. We had Beyonce, Shirley Ralph, um, Diana Ross, all that. The ladies did a great job. I did like how Crystal, which is Candace's sister, confronted Ashley about Candace being attacked. You know, she was like, not on my watch. This should not happen, especially to my sister, for the second time. Because, you know, Candace was attacked before by Monique. And some would say, you know, rightfully so. I don't know if I agree or disagree. But, hey, sometimes you talk about it, you get, you know what I'm saying? Um, side note. I already mentioned that. Sorry. Why is Nick's neck always stuck out? <laughs> um, Candace we already mentioned it's not coming back to RHOP next season is it because of all the drama that she keeps getting beat up because of her mouth I don't know is it so that she can take the time to finally you know grow and have a baby we don't know um I have 19 seconds left sadly even though I don't like Giselle I have a heart um you know I feel bad for her her father did pass away so that's pretty sad and she was kind of sad about it um Ashley is still not divorced from Michael why ching ching uh me one more second guys we all know mia is getting or trying to get a divorce from her husband slash sugar daddy slash whoever uh gordon she has been messing around on him even though gordon knows his information he allowed her to step out of the marriage <laughs> with someone yeah. younger apparently a radio personality we'll get more into that on the reunion but um that is the recap for RHOP season finale. I feel like that was a great recap, right, guys? <laughs> <sighs> Clap it up. Clap it up. Yeah, so good job, sis. Yeah, that was good. Yes. I was tuned in, and I've never even seen the episode. Yeah. <laughs> but we will see, I guess, what happens in the the next The reunion, yeah. Yeah. 
so make sure y'all stay tuned we are going to get into our next segment Mm -hmm. which we like to call who's making moves we tried to come in real low because we didn't know what key but you know what lately we've been nailing the key every time so yeah (laughs) but yeah for those of you who couldn't hear because we was trying to get our key right um and this segment is who's making moves exactly just a little something that we like to do to shine a light on somebody who was out here making big boss moves in society impacting people um just doing their thing you know and in honor of women's history month yes right we are Shouting out none other than Big Dog herself. And I know if she watching. Our mom. Mother. Um Vicel Jones. Well Vi Molly. Uh oh. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> Bissell. <laughs> <laughs> everything that she's been named <laughs> yes guys we were talking about none other than the lady who brought us into the world birthed us and groomed us to be the wonderful ladies that we are yes um oh where do we even start we yeah, don't want to be here all day yeah all. and i don't even, we don't even need this child right. we don't need no nose <laughs> but when we talk about a woman who has truly showed us what it means to be um intelligent walk in a room with class dignity style because she is a fashionable lady that's who you know we get our like of fashion Mm -hmm. from and you know person who's been making moves you know academically uh financially emotionally Mm -hmm. she's been our teacher our uh best friend mom dad she's yeah every day she's wearing a different hat yes right now to this day and we big grown okay (laughs) (laughs) and yeah so our mom is just an amazing woman, and some of the moves that she's made—I mean, if she, yeah, let's, first let's off, some of the, other, yeah, besides yeah. the stuff, loving, caring, nurturing, understanding, definitely understanding. Yes. Okay, um, I mean, this lady has been an educator, a school teacher, impacting kids' lives for over twenty years. Twenty okay? years. Let's start there because it's not easy being a teacher. You know, to yeah. multiple personalities every day of different kids and their issues, and trying yeah. to. Yeah, and our mom did not teach at the, uh, let's just say, um, most um, impactful schools. Uh, she did start off at some rough ones. I'm talking like lean on oh me my. rough. But that don't mean that the kids are. No, no, no. I'm, no, I'm saying, give an example. Like she started off at schools with <clears throat> kids who were very challenged and kids who didn't have our upbringing. True. Kids who came from broken homes fatherless daughters and you know motherless kids and yes just you know kids with parents that was just out there and you know just really tr- some were some of them were troubled mm-hmm. and my mom just i i remember the times where she actually um brought things for her kids yes. like, all the time like there was a, like a i remember one time i don't know what year it was it was like a school dance my mom brought dresses for her uh, for like think two of her students so because that they could they, go exactly because the, she the you can tell you know kids still want to fit in you know kids still yeah. want to have nice things like the other kids but being a teacher you get to see like oh this student really you know they can't really afford it so she went out of her way out of her pocket okay mm-hmm. taking money out of our plate <laughs> to provide beautiful gowns for these girls this is definitely not the first time because I definitely remember growing up mom would like drop toys off drop clothes off yeah. shoot perishable food items to some of her you know impoverished students not yeah. saying all her students are but it just shows like more yeah. than a teacher she really has a giving kind heart yeah she was like a mom to them some of her kids even asked her if she could be yes. their mom because that's the type of connection and impact she yes. had and she was doing such a wonderful job throughout the years one year she was even named teacher of the year yes voted teacher of the year and we were so proud so proud because it just we see all the hard work that it's not when she clocks out at 3 45 she come home and her job is over she comes home and she's still working grading papers making lesson plans meeting with parents so for her to be honored for teacher of the year just showed like finally somebody is seeing all the work that this lady is putting in yeah and and not just what she do honey because she is a really is a great teacher her score talk about it be the highest scores in her school every single every time year. and that's fast you can take that to the bank okay and you know why that <laughs> is because not only is she teaching them this stuff in the book but she has and i know this personally yeah mom has a way of like showing people or informing people in a yeah. way that's not just by the book you know she brings real life situations into it she brings her fun into it her personality. yeah and it makes kids remember and learn it so yep. 
whenever it's test day or it's time for them to, you know, get something, her class is, has the highest scores of the best one. And it's yeah. awesome. She makes the classroom enjoyable. Yeah. Um, as far as her teaching moves, you know, she's got three degrees. Um, she's bought beautiful homes. This house right now that we're in. Um, Purchase she's herself. Paid herself. Um, I mean, just everything, you know, really showing what it is to be an independent woman. And I really, you know, I know now, now the world is trying to steer away from, you know, the term strong black woman because it does put a lot of weight on black women. Yeah. But if I'm being honest, our mom really does embody what a strong black woman is. is. If yeah. I just told y'all half the stuff she'd have been through with my daddy, y'all would be like, woo. Okay. So, <laughs> and with the family. <laughs> yes. So we just wanted to, you know. Yeah. And shout out to, um, our grandmother too because that's who she got it from our grandmother yes, now, that was a strong woman herself oh my god that's somebody who went through hell and back yes and my mom that's what she got it from and if sophie and i could be half the woman yes. that these two are i think we'll be okay exactly my mom took a lot of her characteristics and traits and kind heart from her mom which is our grandma mm -hmm. who you know, I will say this, when my grandma's health was declining and my mom stepped up to the plate and really, yes. you know, we took care of her to the end, mm -hmm. it really opened my eyes and helped mature me. And I think Danny would say the same um, yeah. of how to really just be a great daughter or a great child, you know. Yeah, to the plate. This lady has done so much for you. Now it's and your now time. And now your time to get back. So that's why, you know, we... Hoping that one day we will be successful because yes. y'all please hit that like, follow yes. us, subscribe so we can give our mom what we really yes. want. Our to. mom gave us, uh, brought us into this world, so we're hoping one day we can give her the world yes. back, man. So make yes. sure y'all follow and watch this video 10 times and share it with your friends so we can blow up, okay? <laughs> and you know what? One day we'll even have her on the show so yes. you guys can meet this incredible woman, yes. So, um, shout out to mom, Vicel Jones, White, you know, uh, of course, this platform, we wouldn't even be doing this because she w believes in us. Yes. She has all half of this equipment, first off, because she right. believes in every, that's what I want to say. Sorry, real quick. Every idea or dream that we have brought to our mom over the and years. And I mean every. I'm talking about from a kid, I want to be a, a scientist. She brought me these dig, that frog catcher. I want to be a politician. She, uh, helped me. Uh, when I was in the debate club, like every she was yeah. on the swim team. Any, I was on the swim team. She got got me all my swim lessons. She wanted she to be a model. She did her headshot. Like every dream that we have wanted, she said, "Okay, boom, boom." Let's, and and you know. even this one with our podcast, there were some times I was hoping I we ain't gonna lie, we got lazy. We took a, one too many breaks. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, "Y'all need to keep going. Do not give up. Y'all are gonna." Be, she always says it. Y'all are going to be stars one day, but you have to stay consistent. Have to stay consistent. <laughs> that C word be getting us. Consistency. Yes. Because, you know, one day she wants to see us be successful. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we just wanted to, you know, shout out our mom for the lady who really is making moves during Women's History Month. Yes. Um, so to wrap up this episode of Sister Sound Off, before we get out of here, we want to sprinkle something called Danny's Dose. Danny's Dose. This is just me giving you guys a little something, something to take with you for the rest of the week, okay? And like Sophie said, this is Women's History Month. I thought I would give a nice quote from one of the most inspirational women and leaders, um, hell, since since we knew her, yeah, <laughs> since we met her and her husband. Um, and it's from Mrs. Michelle Obama. Ooh, mm -hmm. no, we miss you, girl. And we miss your husband. Please. Okay, um, and her quote is, goes like this. Instead of letting your hardships and failures discourage or exhaust you, okay, let them inspire you. Let them make you even hungrier to succeed. Okay, so all them hardships and failures, basically, don't let them get you down. Mm. Use them as fuel to light a fire up your ass and go out there and succeed no matter what comes your way. That's what that's how she that's, was saying if she was back in Chicago in her uh, other areas. But right. you know, the the other Michelle. Right, right. <laughs> oh, I really like that. I yeah. really like that. Yeah, and I mean it's definitely a lesson for, for us and anybody. Yeah, for anybody. Yeah. Cause a lot of times you think about it, our hardships, failures, it, it gets to you uh, it quickly. So always try to remember to use it to inspire you and mm -hmm. to keep you going like she said make 
let them make you even hungrier to succeed. Mm -hmm. So I try to take that and use it as fuel. Like, you know what, this was a sucky day, but tomorrow is around the corner. I can try again. Exactly. I'll try again. Exactly. So um, shout out to Miss Michelle Obama girl. Hopefully one day, I don't know if you're up for it. If you're a game, we can talk about a game plan. Maybe you'll run for president one day and make history yet again. Please. <laughs> Cause I don't know what's going on right now. Right. With these politics. Uh, you know what? That wraps up Sister Sound Off episode nine. nine. Um, guys, my favorite number. It is. Yeah, it's so Ooh. random. A nine? Yeah, nine. I just feel like. Yeah, it's my favorite number. Okay, well, I am <laughs> Sophie <laughs> Joe. I am Danny the Doll. And guys, we will see you in our next episode. Okay, episode ten. We're doing the big because we're coming to win. Hey. Ooh, and on my chinny chin chin. All right, we out. Okay, bye, y'all. <laughs> Can you speak with